right. Let's see some guests kind of coming on in. Welcome in. Good to have you all here today. Welcome in. Numbers are climbing. Welcome. We've got 40 attendees right now. Great turnout. Numbers are still climbing. And we will go ahead and get started for the sake of time. So hello, everyone, and welcome. I am LaShirella Mirbay, Program Manager for Canberra Outdoors, and I am excited to be here today. It is awesome to have you all joining us for our kickoff of Conversations with Canberra, the state of DEI and the outdoor industry. Today will be an interactive webinar where Canberra will share insights and industry leaders will join us to discuss trends, challenges, and opportunities to measure change and progress in the DEI workplaces and spaces that you all exist in. We have three awesome special guest speakers from Towski Valley and Scarpa and people from Bikes. So I'm very excited for them to share their experiences with you today. Before we move forward, we wanna take care of some housekeeping items. It's very important that everybody knows that this is a safe place and a safe space to grow and develop. So while we are interacting with one another today, please remember our norms. Be honest with yourself and others, be open-minded, be clear, be kind and courteous and activate your growth mindset. Again, this is a very interactive webinar. We will have an opportunity for you to interact with our panelists and we'll do that through our Q&A toolbar there on your uh, Zoom toolbar. So in lieu of the chat, we'll save the chat for our interactions for later, but we would like for you, if you wanna get your questions answered to use that Q&A toolbar section. So during that time, we'll actually use that. We will also have an opportunity for you to use the toolbar um, for our panelists later on as well when we have our camera uh, guests on and have an opportunity for them to speak. Uh, so again, looking forward to getting those questions answered again, use that Q&A toolbar. I also wanna point out that we will also uh, be recording this webinar. And so you'll have an opportunity, all attendees to view that later. We'll send out an email um, with all the important uh, links that you'll need um, and moving forward with that. So I just wanted to make sure we took care of some housekeeping things before we get started. One last piece is we wanna make sure um, that we give an opportunity for you to see the flow for today. So um, we'll start off with our agenda here. Uh, we'll have a word from our special uh, CEO, Tiffany Smith. Um, Mindy Silva, our chief of staff, will have an opportunity to come in and give you a nice little summary about the Canberra survey. Um, we'll then move into myself, kind of giving me some information about our partners and our glows and grows, which I'll explain a little bit later. Um, again, we'll have an opportunity for our partners to come on and give their testimonials. Really looking forward to that. Um, and during that time, you'll have an opportunity to give your about 10 minutes for Q&A, again, using that Q&A toolbar there on your Zoom feature. Um, then we'll move into uh, our DNI action steps. You use the opportunity to um, dig in there and get some reflection pieces. Um, we'll look at how to leverage DEI data. And then we'll finally end with a little bit of a Q&A, but also an opportunity for you to give some live feedback. So before you log off today, just make sure you kind of hang on. We'll give an opportunity for you to get that um, live feedback there via a survey that we'll take here and also an opportunity to hear from our Canberra staff. Uh, so that gives you a nice overview of what we have for today. Um, I want to give a, a nice opportunity to kind of brag about my CEO and just give her the floor at this moment. Um, Conversations with Cameron has been her vision, so we are happy to have her here and share her opening statement. So passing the floor over to you, Tiffany. Thank you so much, Lachero. I am super excited to be here today to convene with all of you. Um, so I am the official welcoming committee from the Canberra team, which includes the Canberra Board of Directors, as well as staff. We want to thank each of you for taking some time out um, to join us and or listen in. And so just real quickly here, conversations uh, with Canberra, um, our objective is to simply unite industry leaders and stakeholders to foster Three things, collaboration, to drive innovation, and advocate for positive change in the outdoor industry. And so today we're going to address the state of diversity, equity, and inclusion in the outdoor industry. And while we all enjoy the breathtaking landscapes and thrilling adventures that we have in the outdoors, and it's been a place of solace and even inspiration to some but unfortunately not for all. So it is essential that we recognize that historically, the outdoor industry has faced challenges ensuring DEI is truly embraced and promoted. In recent years, there has been progress 
and acknowledging the lack of representation and inclusion within the industry. Brands and organizations and individuals just like you have begun to recognize the importance of diversity in all aspects of outdoor activities, from marketing campaigns to leadership positions. This recognition is a significant step in the right direction. And however, we recognize that inclusion in the outdoor industry means going beyond just token gestures. It requires building a sense of belonging for everyone, regardless of race, gender, ethnic group, sexual orientation, ability, or background. Initiatives to improve accessibility, representation, and education must be the priority. And we do recognize the significance of this most recent Supreme Court ruling and the potential impact that it may have on our ongoing efforts. And while the ruling does provide new legal considerations, we remain steadfast in our commitment to advance diversity, equity, and inclusion in the outdoor sector. It reminded me that we, the collective we, me, you, I, our brands, we're leaders and we have the power to do what's morally right and make sure the outdoor industry is competitive in this ever-changing world and workspaces. At Camber, we're committed to amplify the underrepresented group's voices within the industry and among outdoor enthusiasts. Listening to diverse perspectives is key to understanding different communities, unique challenges, and crafting solutions that benefit all. Moreover, the industry must capital M, capital U, capital S, capital T. We must invest in education and training to promote cultural competence among the stakeholders. Educating employees, leaders, and guides on DEI topics can foster more inclusive environments and help dismantle stereotypes that may still exist within the industry. Recognizing there is still much work to be done, we need to hold ourselves accountable for progress. Transparent reporting on DEI metrics and benchmarks help track advancements and identify improvement areas. And so today, we will talk about how the Canberra survey system does just that. You will hear from industry leaders from various organizations, some of your peers, sharing their wins on how they are driving meaningful change in the outdoor industry. But before we hear from them, let me introduce you to Mindy Silva. She is our chief of staff. She has many responsibilities within Camber, but one of them includes managing and directing the Camber survey system in partnership with Claremont Graduate Center. I believe this is one of the driving mechanisms for change. And there isn't a survey or there isn't results that I've seen so far in the industry or beyond than what we have seen over the last three years. So without further ado, um, I would like for you all to drop an orange heart in the chat or drop a thumbs up or a high five in the chat to help me welcome Mindy Silva, our Chief of Staff. Oh, thank you, Tiffany, so much for that warm welcome. Thank you for all the uh, wonderful messages in the chat. I'm so excited to be here today. I remain incredibly inspired and hopeful as we look at our camera partners and what they are doing and what so many more can be doing as they join our community. Uh, for the last three years, Camber has had the opportunity to measure workplace DEI progress in the outdoor industry via our Camber survey system. As a matter of fact, on August 1st, we will launch the fourth year of this incredibly robust resource. So many of our partners have already signed up. If you haven't yet, there's still time to do so. And later on, I'll drop my email in the chat if you have some questions. For our special guests here today who are not yet a Camber member, but are still here part of the outdoor community, this Camber survey provides insights about the state of DEI in the outdoor industry across a cohort of committed partners who are committed to their DEI journey, embedding it as part of their DEI strategy across all departments. So it's been a really exciting uh, to witness all of the changes happening. And they get to not only compare it and benchmark it across a cohort of peers, 
they also get their individual data year over year to make sure that they're making progress in their own workplace. As Stif Tiffany talked about, we partnered with world-renowned Claremont Graduate University and their evaluation center, their DEI researchers and methodologists. It is still, in their opinion, one of the most robust surveys that they've had the opportunity to develop. It provides the foundation for successful DEI strategy and implementation. More than 50 partners last year participated, over 3,000 employees. We anticipate much more this year. And one of our partners who is here today from SCARPA um, had some perspective to lend us on what it's doing in the workplace. And I'd like to quickly read. It says, this report was the best organized and most thought-provoking executive summary I have seen or heard of. A set of actionable stepping stones, a path to constant improvement and enlightenment is our best play. So much gratitude for the work and so much gratitude from Canber to the Scarpa team. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, teams who are all here today, who Lachera will have an opportunity to introduce very shortly. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mindy, for the insight on the survey. Tiffany as well. Thank you for our welcome. Now, now let's take a look at some of the key findings and progress made by our Canber partners. We'll do that today by looking at partner glows and grows. And I want to break down exactly what those glows and grows are. So in the education world, a glow, we, something, a term that we use more than likely is a glow, a glow is something that is very uh, important and kind of highlights what, uh, the power that is going on with our Canberra partners, right? A, a grow is an area of development. It's something that we want our partners to continue to move forward on. So let's get into that now. So we take a look here, um, we have our Camber Partner Glows, and I'm really excited to share the impact that's been going on there with our partners. 72% of our partners last year reported progress on promoting employees from underrepresented communities, and that's a huge jump there, about 8% increase from 2020. Uh, and uh, also last year, about 78% of our partners provided access to DEI education, and we really are excited about that as we are kind of pushing through in our virtual webinars and other online trainings that we offer here at Canberra. 71% uh, established DEI committees, and that rose about 41% from 2020, which is during that pandemic era. So that's awesome to point out there. We also had about 72% kind of set goals of inclusive culture and leadership practices, and 68% set goals in our diverse talent pathway. So that's awesome. Great gains and awesome progress there. Way to go to our partners. I also want to point out here on the screen that we have a QR code there. It will point out those key findings. Mindy will also drop that link there in the chat so you can dig a little bit deeper and that'll send you right to our webpage there. We can get a little bit more information. So again, those are our glows from our partners. Let's move forward to our grows. And again, remember our grows is gonna give you an opportunity to see the areas um, that can be a little bit more developed there with our partners. So again, last year, just kind of looking at the demographics of the industry, um, Canberra programming seeks to address the lack of BIPOC representation, right? So we have about 81% white, there, we're really uh, seeking to kind of push the envelope there with that BIPOC representation. We also looking at the gender equity gap, have about 85% of our C-suite positions that are held by men. So we're really looking to push that. And with our flagship uh, programs that we have here with our mentoring and allyship programs, um, we're sure that um, we can kind of push the envelope there. Only 49% of our employees report that uh, they feel that they get the equitable pay. So that's a little bit under half and really uh, pushing that as well. Um, our Canberra DEI building blocks provides information about the equitable systems and practices there um, as you look at those last groups there. So we're really looking at touching on those areas with the Voices from the Future of Work series that we're highlighting in some of our programs. And so we'll continue to push there, but I just wanted to point out some areas of development, and I know that we will make it there with our hard work and diligence. So again, the QR code is there. You can kind of follow that link to get a little bit more information. Uh, and again, shout out to our uh, partners for just kind of pushing and working hard in those areas. Coming next up. So this will give you an opportunity with this screen here um, with our QR code. You can kind of go in and dig a little bit deeper. This will give you the landing page for our Camber survey. Um, Mindy will also place that uh, link into the chat so you can kind of explore a little bit deeper and get a better understanding of the Camber survey. Also, um, we want to point out the survey launches August 1st. So I know that time is fastly approaching, um, but we would like to get you signed up early. And yes, there is still time to sign up early. So um, we'll give you an opportunity to do that here as well. 
Um, if you have any questions about the Canberra survey, my, Mindy, myself, the staff, or anybody else on the team can kind of reach out and help you there. Um, we're just willing to help you. So think about some questions that you may have towards the end of the webinar. Hold on. Don't log off. We got some special goodies there for you. Uh, so just make sure that you get those questions answered by using that Q&A toolbar a little bit later. Moving forward, now we're getting to the good part. I'm really excited about that. This is the survey testimonials. Um, this will give us an opportunity to really spotlight some of our Canberra partners who have really jumped in with the Canberra survey. Um, but before we do so, we want to take care of some housekeeping things. So remember, we will have a Q&A session. That Q&A session will be about 10 minutes. And I know that's short time, um, but do your best to get your questions answered by getting that Q&A toolbar active and putting those questions there. The Canberra staff will be there to kind of support um, and get those questions answered. So really looking forward to that. Let's now take a second to introduce our special guests. I am really excited to do this, you all. It's a long time coming. And so you can see all their beautiful faces up here on the screen. And so I'll take a second to give you a little bit more insight about each person. We'll start off with Melanie Hood, and she is from SCARPA. She is the Marketing and Communications Director there at SCARPA. She grew up in Colorado. Um, she started a career in the fashion industry. That's awesome. Started out in the outdoor industry with National Ski Patrol Office, and she's been with SCARPA since 2018. So thank you so much, Melanie, for being here. We also have Robbie Rajkumar there from Vice President. He's the Vice President of Business Network for People for Fights. Um, his experience has helped lead some of the world's best athletes, brands, and organizations to deeper engagement with audiences. He leads a successful executive coaching practice, has a wealth of knowledge in the outdoor industry and beyond. And we're so happy to have Robbie here as well. Last but certainly not least, we have Susie Benton, Director of Human Resources at Taos Ski Valley. She's from Colorado, lives in Taos, New Mexico, and has been there the last 25 years. Started working with Taos Ski Valley Inc. as a frontline staff member, kind of worked their way up and promoted her self to director of HR and uses prior experience to leverage leadership in the field. A big welcome to all of our special guests today. We are so excited to have you here. We'll now move forward to kind of giving some specific, uh, kind of almost interview style questions here to our panelists. Um, and so we'll start out there with Melanie. Melanie, so happy to have you here. How are you feeling today? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Outstanding, Melanie. So a little bit in our pre-interview um, kind of conversation that we had, we had a great conversation. I kind of wanted to give the audience some insight on some of the amazing things that you all are doing there, Scarpa. So I wonder if you could spotlight some existing employee benefits and ideas about the future benefit packages within your organization. So I'll give you a second to really kind of highlight those benefit uh, packages that you all have. Yeah, I think, you know, from where we are just kind of talking about how we use the survey into how our benefit packages changed over the last years. For the last um, three years, SCARPA has done um, the survey. We have around 30 employees. And um, for the last three years, we've really had close to a 97% um, completion rate of the survey year over year. Um, I think we have such a high survey completion rate because our staff and our employees know that we make it a priority. Um, to really understand how they feel and, and make changes based on that. So um, the survey has been extremely valuable for us for four kind of reasons. The first, um, as we're launching new um, brand initiatives and projects, we want to make sure that they're actually understood by our staff. The second reason, um, we want to make sure that the current benefits that we're offering are actually um, widely known throughout our entire staff. Um, we used it to kind of look at what benefits um, we were missing and then the last reason, um, how changes that we were discussing at the executive level um, might affect our um, employee satisfaction and retention rate. So I'll just kind of quickly run through a few examples. So for new projects that were understood, um, really, we launched about five years ago um, the SCARPA stands, which um, really is four pillars, our planet, products, people, and principles. Um, planet and products are really, have always been really understood by our staff. We talk about our products all the time. We talk about the sustainability of each product. So I think our staff was really in tune with those things. But what we found through the survey is they didn't understand or recognize as in tune on the people and the principles side of our four pillars. So through that, we implemented um, time to talk about people and principles in our monthly staff meetings. So our, our full staff kind of understands the initiatives that we're doing there from our SAMI program to other programs um, so that they really hear a consistent message about people and principles and not just product and what we're doing for um, sustainability. 
Uh, for the second, um, we looked at what um, benefits that we were currently offering, and we realized that our employees didn't necessarily um, acknowledge some of the benefits that we were using, and most of those were actually the fully paid benefits from SCARPA, things they didn't have to actually um, opt into or didn't things that didn't come out of their paycheck. So um, things like we do a full life insurance program and everyone just gets that as a staff, but we realized that most of our staff didn't actually understand that. And when we took our first survey and most of them checked the box that they didn't get life insurance. And we were like, oh my gosh, it's a fully paid benefit from SCARPA. Folks should know that they have that. So it really gave us a chance to kind of go through, you know, everybody understood health benefits or, you know, the employee discount program or those type of things, but go through the benefits that are kind of hidden in there. Some of them actually we found a few of our Folks didn't really even realize that we matched their 401k, even though we talk about it in our handbook and we have um, meetings about it once a year. I don't think they fully understood. So we were able to actually go back and have some solid meetings as a staff about those benefits. So they fully understood the entire package that they get. Um, one of the other things we really used the survey for was to determine what HR benefits we could add that would assist most of our employees. So one of the things we really looked at and we we implemented was adding parental leave instead of just maternity leave um, for our employees. Um, we just like, unfortunately, well, we're almost actually half and half male and female now. At the beginning of the survey, we were probably more in that 80%, but we're, we're quickly hitting um, close to that 50, I think we're 60, 40 split. But we actually realized through the survey that a lot of our men were really interested in parental leave. And so we didn't want to just leave it maternity leave. So we actually were able to see that information through the survey and make a strategic change in how we implemented a new benefit, which is parental leave. Um, we also really looked at, you know, the, the starting of the survey kind of coincided with COVID. And so as all of that shook our world, we really used the survey to look at our PTO. Um, so we changed our PTO just to be full PTO. And now we've kind of, we added a little bit of time and added PTO and sick time. And really what we heard through the survey that a lot of our staff and employees were concerned about people coming to work sick um, because they wanted to save their time off for vacations and things they had planned. We have a very active outdoor um, employee group and who are, you know, out climbing and skiing and planning these amazing vacations and they didn't want to use their PTO when they were sick. So we really decided to add specific sick time and, and create some rules around that based on what we saw in the survey. Um, and kind of the last major way we use the survey, uh, we really looked at how changes that we were discussing again at that executive level might change employee satisfaction and retention. One of the things that we've really been using the survey for and discussing is our back to work program. So everybody for a long time was remote as much as we could be. And so we really wanted to look at the information we saw from the survey from all departments. Obviously we have departments that it's easy to work from home, um, like my department marketing, but then we also have a full warehouse staff and obviously they need to be at work every day. And so we wanted to kind of see what the full staff looked at for that. and. From all the information that we gathered from the Camber survey, then we were able to actually dig a little bit deeper beyond the Camber survey. Um, and we actually determined that a hybrid work schedule um, would continue to feel like a large benefit for those who could work at home, but also feel a little bit more equitable than for those folks who had to come to the office every day and work in our warehouse and some of the other positions that we had. So um, we've been able to kind of track that each year as that hybrid schedule has changed a little bit and see how that employee satisfaction and retention rate based on um, their specific questions in their survey about hybrid and remote working um, and how those were able to, uh, how our changes affected those responses and the satisfaction rate of our employees. So just a quick kind of how we've used the survey to look at our specific HR benefits. Um, I think it's really great for us. We're excited to participate in the survey again here in a few weeks um, to really be able to use the survey for that year after year check on our progress in the changes that we've made, but also make strategic um, changes that will help us with staff um, retention and satisfaction. So there's a quick kind of blurb about how SCARPA has been using the Canva survey. 
Well, thank you, Melanie, so much for sharing. You said something so critical in, in that piece of information was about creating the system so that they're equitable, right? And that's been a really key driver in all of this measuring data, being able to look at what is happening year over year in your workplace, which has been absolutely remarkable to watch your journey. And then also benchmarking that against other committed peers who are also trying to make progress. One of the things we learned when we were creating the Voices from the Future of Work here at Camber was how important family benefits were to underrepresented groups very specifically. It was a common thread all the way through. And it's a conversation we specifically had with SCARPA around family benefits. So it's amazing to see how these conversations, how, you, how you're taking actionable steps to make change, to not only retain your talent, but to attract underrepresented groups. Kudos to you on the job in terms of the gender diversity across your workplace. It's amazing to see your progress. We're so grateful that you were here today to share with all of our outdoor industry uh, peers and so thank you so much for being here today. Absolutely, thank you for having me. All right, next we'll have Robbie from People for Bikes join us here today. Thank you so much for being here. Right, Robbie, so hey, welcome in. Thank you, Melanie, for that awesome transparency. We appreciate that. Happy to have you here as well, Robbie. Um, just want to kind of to pick your brain about some of the conversation that we had uh, kind of before the webinar. I mean, we really kind of dug into a really specific concept when you talked about progress over perfection. Um, you really talked about the integration of organizational wide training that has created a safe place for your employees. So if you can expound on that, that would be awesome. No, I'd love to. Thanks, LaCheryl. Thanks, team. First of all, thanks for including me here today on this, this discussion. I care about it personally. Our organization does, and so does our membership at PFB. So I wanted to kind of highlight a little bit before we dive into it, a little bit about us, right? We're People for Bikes. We're the Industries Trade Association, the Cycling Industries Trade Association, as well as the National Advocacy Group. So we have one simple mission is to get more people riding bikes. So nice and simple. It's a, it's a, it's a big program. It's a big vision. And that's what we're going to do in our lifetimes and lifetimes beyond us. Um, also, a little bit of, I, I think it's a glow, right? We've had a long-term relationship with um, with Camber. It's been more than a decade. So we are all in all the way through. So I want to be thank, I want to make sure everyone knows that and, and just share that gratitude. Um, anytime we as an organization or any of our members have, we need some consultation, we need some help, we need some insight. Camber's always there for us, uh, whether it's Tiffany being part of our, um, our leadership conferences and, and helping guide us there in sessions, whether it's Le Cheryl and Mindy leading us one on one with our organizational specific pieces, you know, or Tina and the team, anytime we have a, um, a need, you're always there. So I just want to make sure everyone is really clear. We're all in Camber all the time. <laughs> and then diving into just really what, what you what we talked about before team, you know, Le Cheryl and team, it was really highlights for us. Um, Camber is a trusted partner. You have been and continue to be there with us to help uh, grow and transform as an organization. Um, trying to frame frame up this meaningful work we do, it's it's really impactful. It, it, oftentimes it's hard. We want to make those improvements, but we really frame that up in a mantra of not letting perfection get in the way of progression and problem solving. So we try to really live by that mantra in the work that we do in this space. And, and we have that through a lens across internally across People for Bikes and with our 325 members that are industry members that help us, um, you know, not quite externally, but in part of that conversation. Um, so su super important for us. Yeah, another thing I'd like to share is really, Camber has a wealth of resources. Um, your online modules, um, all the resources that are available, individual education pieces, uh, we've done deeper dives with training for our organization internally with Mindy and our staff. Um, the, the team's been super helpful in our DEI journey and guidance also. So that's internally. And also we, we're trying to frame up and help our association, right? Our industry become better. So we have an industry DEI subcommittee. And as we are learning and testing things in, in both education and implementation with that subcommittee, we rely on on Camber and resources and insight along the way to help us there. So it's all part of that progression to, to do better and to you know, make both sound financial and equitable decisions for all along the way. And then that Camber survey, it's that shining star. It's the magical tool. And uh, we're excited to take part in, in the version that's coming up really soon. So we're, we uh, earmark time for our organization to be ready and our staff to, to, to populate it. 
it's it's um, exhaustive. It's authentic. It's such a great scorecard to see where we are and where where we've made improvements. So I think we're really super proud proud of the work we've done. Lots more to do, but the progression we've made as an organization, both from the leadership side as well as you know every single staff member is really dedicated to this work. And then we're all about tangible highlights, right? So I'm going to just rattle off a couple of highlights. I'm calling them the lucky seven. We can dive into it later, but it's pretty fine. Some of the things that we really are proud of, the first one is really um, our, our internal DEI subcommittee. We, we, we had a lot of, we had a, led a, a big aperture, let's say, of a lot of areas we wanted to move forward. But with the Canberra results, we were able to really narrow down that focus and know exactly where to put those efforts, both internally um, for the organization, and we're using that same process for externally for, for our subcommittees. Some other easy wins were, what we've learned from that survey, we were able to update our handbook from our staff and employee handbooks and really in a specific area with a grievance policy. We're a pretty, uh, pretty culture forward organization, but we were able to really sharpen our even our grievance policy through that, that piece. Another benefit we were able to see and learn from that was around mental health for all of our staff. It was a simple fix for us, but we learned that we could have a monthly stipend for mental health and whether you were on our internal um, insurance plan or you worked out of the office externally, like I do, there was a stipend available for you for, for uh, overall wellness and monthly uh, and mental health. We also learned some other things like over communication. Immediate change happens with over communication. So something as simple as that was a key takeaway for us to, to implement. Uh, we also learned how important it is to our staff and our organization as a whole to have hard conversations. So we added safe places and framework with the help from, uh, from Mindy and the organization as we do those trainings to really set up space and time for that. Um, and then even specifically, we, we put something into place to have six month individual goals, six month organizational goals, identify it, track it, and transparently share how we're doing on that progression. So again, these are just a few highlights of the things that um, we work with Camber to, to move ahead and happy to answer any other questions as we go a bit further. Awesome. Well, thank you, Robbie, so much for sharing. It truly has been an honor to partner with People for Bikes in this journey. Uh, very early on, the leadership team immediately began to make changes at the equitable systems level, looking at HR, recruitment, retention policies, uh, equitable uh, pay policies. It was amazing to see your team just really jump right in and embrace all the change. I also want to say a special thank you to your DEI committee, who has been instrumental in driving change within your organization, externally in the cycling community, and even here at Camber. Um, they partnered with us on this training journey to think about how we have difficult conversations and navigate those, address issues of implicit bias, and really be self-reflective and aware of what we're bringing into the workplaces and creating those spaces for psychological safety. So it's been quite impressive to witness. It brings me so much joy every time I have an opportunity to be with you and your team. Uh, thank you so much for your contributions today and every day as part of all of our journey together. We appreciate you. Thank you. Our pleasure. All right. Thank you so much. And next we have Susie from Towski Valley joining us for the conversation today. Welcome, Susie. Uh, good morning and well, good lunchtime for some of you that I saw in the chat. So. <laughs> Awesome, Susan. We appreciate that. And thank you, Robbie, for that awesome explanation. Continued growth there at People for Bikes. And we're just excited to be partnering with you. Susie, excited to talk to you today. We had also a great conversation. Um, and I really wanted you to, if you could expand and really talk about those ER groups that you were able to form with your organization. Those are powerful. And um, we really wanted you to kind of focus in on the uh, ability to unite your employees across departments and include that formation of those ERGs. So if you could expand on that for us, please. Yeah, certainly. And and uh, before I go into the ERGs, just a little bit about our company. We're a ski resort in northern New Mexico, and we are the first resort that was certified as a, this first ski resort certified as a B Corp. That was in February of 2017. So similar to other B Corps like Burt's Bees, Patagonia, Ben & Jerry's, we are required to take our community, the environment, our governance, and our guests and our staff into account when we're decision making. Um, so that's a that's a lot of things that, that we have to look at besides just our bottom line, right? 
Uh, being a ski resort, we are also a seasonal employer. We have 91 different departments. Uh, I have over 300 staff members in the summer, and that increases to about 850 in the winter. So we have some pretty unique challenges with that seasonal aspect and finding the benefits and practices that meet a wide, wide range of needs. Um, similar to Melanie, um, this is uh, our fourth year using the Camber survey. And in the first year with our staff, we realized that we had built a great benefits package, but our staff were not fully aware of what we were offering and why. And this led us to create a more strategic communication plan. We focused on the benefits that we felt had the most impact and were the least well known. Um, and then using staff orientations, benefit enrollments, employee surveys, similar, you know, to Camber, uh, that was awesome for us. And the Camber survey especially works as an avenue not only to collect that information, but also as an educational tool to um, increase awareness of our staff about all of our benefit packages. So along with that, with 90 separate departments, we had a need to create a training program that all of our hiring managers engage with to make sure that our hiring practices are inclusive. So our HR team began with the Camber Diverse Talent Hiring Training Program, and we've collaborated with Camber to implement this. In addition, we complete an annual equity study to track the pipeline of talent to make sure that we are supporting diversity from our frontline and creating opportunities for career development into those leadership positions. Um, our directors also participated in the building block series with Camber, and from there, we came up with a plan to tie in compensation with our departmental goals, and that has been huge in moving the needle. Um, a bonus program was put in place at, with our director level and now our managerial levels that outline the department DEI goals, and our HR team helps to facilitate, support, and track those goals. So through Camber, we've learned that the HR department is not always the owner of diversity, equity, inclusion, and this particular, the way that we've set this program up allows our individual departments to really have that ownership of their goals and allows our HR team to support them and guide them. So DI looks very different for each one of our many, many departments and uh, having those goals allows for a lot of flexibility in what is going to impact their team members. Um, during that building block series, we also learned about employee resource groups. And this was a, a relatively new concept to us that we learned about through Camber. Uh, it was really tough for us to find engagement at first. Um, it was, you know, getting getting people involved in work things that are not actually a, a work opportunity, um, but, you know, more something that lends to their personal values and their personal lives. Uh, we've, we've got a lot of it. This is our third year. We have a lot of engagement now. We have three employee resource groups that help us create a more inclusive, fun peer group interactions. We have a social justice book club. We have a music group and we have a healthy eating group, which is uh, really important for, for our area and the demographic that we deal with in Northern New Mexico. Wow, Susie, thank you so much. It's also been a pleasure to be part of your journey there at Towski Valley. I mean, in addition to the strategy, implementation, and evaluation work you are consistently doing, um, I had the honor of being invited out to Towski Valley last year where I met with the entire leadership team, the DEI committee, and to see how everyone is just so committed to making progress and how much you've made just in one year to the next. The fact that you're able to tie your DEI go goals across you know, 90 different departments, over 800 employees really lets us know how the wealth of information you're receiving can really move the needle in places of 30 employees 
and to over the thousands, right? All of it looking at with an equitable systems lens, inclusive leadership practices, and all the things that we need to feel a sense of belonging. And so it's just been a pleasure to join you on this journey, look at all the tangible action steps that you're taking around DEI, the forward progress, and how this will begin to move the needle in the outdoor industry. And it just it helps me to remain hopeful that progress is underway. When people ask me, you know, you look at the, the grows and the glows, right? And I'm seeing so many grows happen with Camber partners like yourself. And uh, thank you for being an inspiration. Thank you for helping be part of a team that is leading this work. And thank you for being a friend in this space. Absolutely. Thank you, Mindy. Wow, y'all, some powerful testimonies right there. I hope the attendees know how special that is to have these three people here uh, in our virtual room just kind of sharing these experiences and being transparent. So again, thank you to our Canberra staff. Thank you to our, our panelists for just being transparent and allowing us to kind of pick your brain and learn a little bit more about your process. Uh, at this time, we're kind of getting close to time. We're at about uh, 39 minutes after the hour. Uh, we're looking at about 10 minutes. So this is a phenomenal opportunity for you to dig in, ask questions to our panelists. Again, I'm kind of queuing you in to use that Q&A toolbar there with Zoom. Uh, again, a perfect opportunity to jump in and ask any questions. So I'll kind of pause here and, and give us a little bit of time to kind of process and add those questions into the chat. I'm sorry, into the Q&A toolbar. Make sure that's specific, into the Q&A toolbar. Let's get us an easier way to kind of get in and get those questions. Any questions at this time? Great opportunity, y'all. Don't let it pass by. Uh, LaCheryl, while we're waiting for those questions sure. to come in, Robbie, can I ask you uh, what, um, how that mental health stipend that you're using works and what it's like geared towards what are staff allowed to use it for? How do you... How do you kind of put some uh, that that foundation around that? Yeah, no, great question, Susie. So our organization is about 37 people and 60% uh, of them, I think, let's say are in the front range in Colorado with our Boulder office and the remainder would be remote, right? And that that's changed over the last few years, um, which is pretty amazing to get the best talent and let people live where they can be their best selves. Um, so folks that um, have... We've got um, insurance coverage, right, for everyone, however they choose to do it. So folks that are on our, our like, in Colorado um, policy process, that's that's included in their coverage. So it's super easy. They, they can get that, um, get any kind of mental health pieces that they want, whether it's a ther therapist or wellness session or whatnot. So that's easy to be included. And then for many of us that I live outside of Atlanta and Athens, Georgia, so I'm not in Colorado, I'm not part of that plan. So for me, I'm able to um, find the resource that I need and just be able to submit it like a normal expense. So really lower barriers to entry and use that for uh, whatever type of wellness or therapy or mental health sessions we want. Awesome, thank you, Robbie, for answering. And I see a couple of questions have popped into the chat. Uh, one of the questions was, uh, who facilitates ER groups at Taos? Yeah, so, um, when they first started that, like the, the goal of the ERG groups is that it is frontline staff facilitated. And that is a really difficult thing to do, um, especially if we're uh, in a, you know, for our, for our company, we have um, ways that we give them resources. So like, you know, for instance, the book club, you know, we buy the books, order the books or give them the stipend to order the books and, you know, make sure that they have, you know, a meal and, and, you know, have a, have a chance to really sit down and discuss that, uh, the inclusivity aspect of the books that they're working on. So we found that the, the best way that we've been able to do this with our ERGs is it starts out as an HR facilitation to get the group going and, we identify um, a staff member or staff members that are just really into it. And we work really closely with them so that they're actually the one that ends up facilitating these groups. It's really important that that handoff happens and that they become staff led. Um, so we're not, you know, we're not steering what decisions that they want to do if, you know, um, some, sometimes they'll 
um, come to a place where they want to do like a presentation for other staff members um, or you know what whatever it is that that they want to share out and we want to make sure that that's their voices that are being heard and not ours so our facilitation ends at providing resources to allow them to to move forward with their groups does that make sense did it answer your question yes thank you for sharing um, I have two questions that kind of tie in. It says, can you provide more details about the survey and also about progress that's happening around gender, ethnicity, backgrounds, et cetera? So the survey essentially takes one or two minutes to sign up. It's essentially the liaison contact information. And then we provide you a full toolkit of frequently asked questions, communications with your team. Camber sends out all the communications that we highly encourage your HR CEO to get involved in encouraging that participation. We work with our partners at Claremont Evaluation Center. It's fielded for 30 days um, across your organization. We collect, we analyze all the data, you get back all the cohort data and your individual company specific data in November so that you can begin planning for your next year. Um, so any more questions, please feel free to, I'll drop my email in the chat again, happy to answer any more detailed questions about signing up for the survey. But in terms of what we're seeing around progress, background and ethnicity, so we still see right that the industry measures 81% white, but what we're starting to see across Canberra partners very specifically specifically is signs tied to gender equity. So we're seeing just like Melanie talked about at SCARPA, more females coming into the industry. So across Canberra Partners, it's almost a 50-50 split when you look at our demographic data, which you can see in the key findings section of the QR code. And we'll send all these links out again at the end. The other thing you'll start to see is that when we look at those signs tied to gender equity, what we're not seeing is the movement of more women into C-suite levels. Thus, you look at our AK mentoring program, our allyship program, really geared toward moving women and uh, BIPOC uh, members into those C-suite positions is when you start to see the churn turnover of diversity really happening. And so I hope that answers a little bit of your questions. Of course, we're here to answer more. Um, our very robust DEI report has so many more details about what changes are happening. Um, we see a few more questions here in the chat. Just want to make sure I'm getting to all the good ones. Uh, Robbie, this one's for you. What motivates and inspires you to do the work you do? It's a big one. I, I like to frame it up as we get to do this work every day, right? I, I'm, a, I'm an outdoors industry person. I've been in the bike space a long time. Um, sports marketing is also my background. I think our leadership team really lives that mantra. We get to do this work for um, for our members, for ourselves, for our planet every day. And we really take on that both opportunity and, um, and responsibility. Thank you so much for that, Robbie. We really appreciate that. I can see a couple of questions coming in in different areas. Uh, we really appreciate those just for the sake of kind of helping the team out. If you can place those questions into the Q&A toolbar, we'll continue to work on getting those answered for you. We're getting close on time. Um, we have about two more minutes. So I see another question in here. And I think that we can direct that towards Susie. Um, the question is from Matt. It says, what type of hiring practices have you all put into place to make the, that whole process more equitable and inviting? Yeah, so that's been that's been huge. And the the Camber, so we started with the Camber Diverse Talent Pipeline training. Um, and you know, when when we did it as an HR team, I was like, this is phenomenal. I've been in HR for 15 years, and some of that stuff was news to me. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, just really using that as a template and then we worked with Camber to develop a training that met the needs of all of our hiring managers. So starting from things like making sure that our job descriptions are inclusive, um, the way that we are conducting our, our interviews and our reference checks are not um, roadblocking people that, that might not have the same types of access, training our managers and being able to identify transferable skills um, so that somebody who might not be in the outdoor industry, you know, identifying those things that are really transferable towards the outdoor industry is a huge one. So those are those are kind of the initial things that I would pick out. But um, but that that training has evolved into 
a, a much deeper conversation with our hiring managers. And so we do them not just as an individual hiring manager training, but we actually bring in five to 10 of our hiring managers at a time so that we can have a conversation about what these things look like and um, what kind of team members they want to bring on and they, what they want their department to look like and what kind of diversity they want to see. So I would, um, can I jump into, I think it's also important to look at, as um, Ravi mentioned, jobs that can be done remotely. And, and jobs that have to be done in person versus the hybrid model, because as we're finding, as we're looking to more diversify our staff, definitely reaching out to different places. Um, we're in Boulder, and that's not always the most diverse place in the in the. <laughs> so being able to have folks um, who can work remotely or jobs that can work remotely and posting them that way. And so you do have applicants that come from, from different places. As Ravi said, he's not in Boulder. He's somewhere else, which is allows him to to help diversify that staff. So thank you so yeah, much. Absolutely. And and Melanie, that's that's one of the toughest things for us is to actually identify those positions because we're we're a ski resort. Somebody's got to actually be here to pull that chair, you know. <laughs> great insights, y'all. Great insights. We are right at the last question. Uh, we have about uh, one minute and Robbie, this will be kind of quick for you. Um, this is coming from Tracy Ravi. Uh, would the mental health stipend be applicable toward fitness program or other active living support? Um, just kind of digging in a little bit more into that question, if you would. Last question. Sure, sure. sure. I'll give a quick answer. No, I, I think from, from our case, I'm not sure if anyone has presented it that way yet. So I think we would be open, our leadership, our organization would be open to it. And that's what I would suggest to, to your organization too. Just think about what would um, most affect the organization and members and whether it's more health-based or wellness-based or another special need for it, I would say let's stay open to it and talk about it uh, because the goal is to attract, retain, and flourish with your employees and whatever the right way to do that is, I think most leadership groups would, would take a look at it. Outstanding. Thank you for that, Robbie. Wow. Panelists and camera staff, thank you for some time to re just really allow our attendees to learn a little bit more, just dig deeper into those concepts. We're doing some awesome uh, comments and appreciation into the chat. So we do appreciate that. Thank you so much. Uh, we have a few minutes left. And so we'll kind of transition a little bit and give you an opportunity to get a little bit more reflective about your individual goals, some organizational goals. Um, and so let's go ahead and do that now. All righty. So what we're going to do now is kind of take a look at some DEI action steps, right? So we want to give you some tangible things that you can kind of walk away with and kind of walk back to your organization and dig in a little bit. If you have a cell phone, this will be a great opportunity for you to be a little bit interactive today um, within our next and last pieces of the webinar. So let's dig in. So for our DEI action steps, we really want to focus in on not flying in blind. We want to give the opportunity for you and your organization to really sit down and kind of think about those goals. So that is very key. Um, the next piece is uh, really looking at looking at some external assistance, right? And that's kind of where Canberra comes in, other DEI professionals. It can be a heavy lift. And so you want to eliminate that bias. You want to make sure that you got some backup. Um, and that's where that external existence uh, can come in, assistance can come in. And you really get that assistance from people like us. So if you're looking for that, we have your back there. Uh, consider developing a DEI or the, uh, diversity dashboard. That's very important there. Um, I kind of, I'm an athlete, so I instantly start to think about the scoreboard, right? You want to be able to kind of take a look at the score within your organization and kind of um, keep abreast of what's going on with the societal trends and also what's going on inside of your organization there. Lastly, um, you really want to consider the pitfalls. And one of those pitfalls that we like to talk about um, is senior buy-in. And we know it kind of starts from the top and it kind of comes down after that, right? Uh, so really making sure that you have buy-in um, from your entire staff is very, very critical there. We'll move forward now and give you an opportunity to be, kind of be a little bit reflective. And this is where that interactive piece comes in. Um, and at this time, we'll give you an opportunity to kind of be reflective about where your organization is. So if you take a look there on the screen, there's a QR code that you can actually scan and we can kind of check the temperature of the room right here live. Um, the question there says, you can also uh, use the slido.com. There's a little number there on the side that'll give you an opportunity to be interactive and check things out. So let's take a look here on the screen. It says, where is your organization currently? And I know this takes some transparency, um, but this is where it all starts, right? So let's give an opportunity for us to kind of see in about 20 seconds where we are. Awesome there. See some people already chiming in. 
Good. You can see that live interaction kind of happening and taking place there on the screen. Yes, yes. So as you can see, a lot of people are there kind of setting DEI goals, and that's great. That's exactly where we want you to be. Um, and so now we'll kind of take a look at some other steps we can take once you have this piece figured out. So again, thank you for your transparency there. I know it's kind of scary to kind of be transparent about those things, but um, again, some great insight about what's going on there in the industry. Thank you for that. So moving forward, we're going to take a look at how to leverage your DEI data. So once you have that data, you're like, what do we do with it? Um, so one of the first things is you want to analyze that data. Again, going back to my athlete metaphor, you want to know how many shots did we get up, right? What are we looking like out there in the field? So that's super important. Um, the next thing is to kind of identify those areas of improvement. Where can we be better? And kind of putting a target on the back, right? Really thinking about those specific areas and not making it so big, but shrinking it down. Um, so that your organization can really focus. Um, you really want to have a developed action plan. That's that game plan, right? What are we going to do? What is the play? How will we move forward? Um, nextly, implementing the, that change, right? So we've had Susie really talk about kind of forming, forming those um, uh, ERG groups and things like that. Um, maybe kind of taking a look at your uh, benefit packages as they talked about earlier as well from our panel. Um, so some great insight there of where you can actually get started. And then we come with implementing change, right? That's where we come in and the action takes place. So we can't talk about it. We definitely have to be about it. And so that's where, again, those um, outside people, for example, camera can come in and kind of help you leverage those pieces. Lastly, this is kind of one of my favorite pieces coming from an educational standpoint that is monitoring that progress, right? So we want to always keep abreast of what's going on, how's the organization doing, and checking the temperature, right? Um, so that is the last piece there for leveraging that DEI data. Thank you for that. Moving forward, we want to make sure that we're also giving you some very actionable uh, steps and takeaways. And so this is an opportunity for you to kind of really dig in and say, is this, is this an appropriate time for us to move forward? And we are hoping it is here at Camber. Um, so we're going to take an inventory at your organization. That's the first thing. So when you walk away from this webinar, really sit down with yourself maybe approach your leadership team, other employees, and really think about um, what we can be do to move forward. Next is seeking that outside assistance. Camber is here to help you. Um, and one of the things that we're really pushing today is that Camber survey. So if you take a look to the right side of your screen there, there's the QR code. You can scan that code. Um, Mindy will drop that uh, QR, uh, the link there into the chat, and that'll give you an opportunity um, to click on it. And if you're willing to sign up, we would love to have you there for our Camber survey for 2023. Lastly, moving forward, we have really enjoyed our conversation today. I hope that you have as well. And so we're asking you to save the day. We have some awesome conversations with Camber coming up. Um, the next one will be on August 30th. We have the DEI Blueprint. Um, and then we also have the Power of Allyship. That's going to be a sweet one too on September 27th. So mark your calendar, save the day. Really looking forward to those. We will also be sending out some information to you. I know everybody's uh, really geared up to get some registration taken care of. Um, and so just take a look at our social media, our email blast. We'll be sending a lot of communication out with for you and also those registration links. So just be looking for those from the team. Lastly, we want to give you an opportunity, and we don't have much time, um, but we'll give you at least a, a minute or two to kind of take a look and give some live feedback to us. We want to make sure that conversations with, Cam uh, with Camber is something that you continue to thrive and learn from, and so we want to hear from our attendees. So if you would, scan the QR code there. Again, Mindy, thank you so much for your assistance. She's going to drop the link there into the chat, and so you can just use this time right now to give us an active look at what is going on with this uh, survey. Um, and so um, we are so happy again to have you here. Um, we had a little time planned here for you for questions. So maybe a minute or two, uh, if our Canberra staff can kind of come back together, I'll leave this screen up here so you can continue to do your live feedback. And if you have any questions for the Canberra team specifically using that Q&A uh, feature, we can take a look at those now. So if you have any questions, a great opportunity to do so. So I'll take a look at that Q&A stream we have going on here. Um, I don't know if we answered this question from Kristen Wizard. I think we kind of showed you the QR code there. If that didn't come in, maybe take a look at the chat. That should be the link there. Any other questions? All righty. If you didn't get an opportunity to take a look at the survey, guess what? It's not too late. We will still be sending out again a recap of the recording of the webinar, uh, all of the important links that you saw. Uh, and again, we appreciate all of you at this time. I want to give uh, our opportunity 
to our CEO to close out for us. So again, thank you all so much for your participation. And Tiffany, we'll turn it over to you. Thank you all so much for joining us. Um, oh my goodness. I am so overwhelmed with joy around this session. It literally feeds our soul to hear the progress and the movement that's happening in the industry. And for us, we know for sure that it takes it takes partnership. And so we are glad to have you all as partners. I did see a couple of notes around how do I become a camera partner? And that's easy. The team will drop. I dropped my Calendly link in there. We dropped our emails in there. So please reach out to us. We're clear that as we embrace diversity, equity, and inclusion in the outdoor industry, it's not just about checking boxes or following trends. And as you heard today, it is about taking action and being the change that we want to see. So thank you all for joining us for Conversations with Camber. We will see you next month. All right. Thank you all so much. We appreciate you all joining. For anybody who wants to stick around, we'll be here answering questions again. Use that chat feature for any other questions you may have. Thank you all.